Hello Shadowbuggers, I am Blunty and welcome to this storied episode of DigiDirect TV. Okay gang, what I had planned for you today was a product review and as usual it would have been insightful and wonderful and useful and filled with excellent example shots and video and stuff so you could make up your own mind about what camera is going to suit you best and all that kind of stuff. Instead, what I'm going to do, because frankly I feel like crap today and I just don't have the energy to finish off the review I was working of. I just I can't, I just can't, I just can't. We all have these days, I'm sure you understand. Instead, what I'm going to do is share with you a story, a story from this morning actually, about me wandering the world and finding a wonderful photograph. This wonderful photograph, as a matter of fact, and I'm going to tell you the story behind that photograph and within this story you people will hopefully find maybe a little inspiration. You newbies in particular will learn, I don't know, three or four really valuable lessons for any photographer out there, no matter what your subject matter is, no matter what equipment you're using. These tips must always be in your mind when you're out there in the world with a camera. So while I was out walking this morning, I came across a pair of Aussie ravens gleefully snacking on a departed rat they'd come across. It caught my eye, of course, and I spent some time just watching the behaviour and letting them get used to me. Unfortunately, when I whipped out my trusty Pentax Q7 that I had with me today, I realised that I am a colossal dingbat and I had forgotten to pop its freshly recharged battery in it before leaving the lair, so I called the iPhone into service. Not the ideal tool for what I was attempting, but, you know, it was still worth trying. Now, aside from a pesky Indian miner, who rather boldly seemed to be trying to chase these relative giants off, the pair were occasionally also disrupted by other passing humans, who, upon investigating what I was watching, tried to get close for their own photos, which would often mean the ravens skittered away momentarily or dragged their meal further away, because they were spooked by these stomping, clomping humans coming up on them when they're trying to have their breakfast. And of course all of their photos will look like crap because they saw something, whipped out the camera phone, took a single shot from wherever they happened to be standing, and moved on. Like all of these photos and video I'm showing you, actually. All crap, ugly, insipid, uninspired, plain. But I was just doing this to get them used to me so they'd figure out that I'm not a threat and I'm not interested in stealing their meal. Ravens are very, very clever birds after all. So I stayed low, I squatted on my haunches to make myself look smaller and less threatening, I stayed and watched the birds and their behaviours so I could predict and plan my shot, and crept very, very gradually closer over the course of, I don't know, ten minutes or so, maybe more. Eventually I got to where I wanted to be, between them and the wonderful sunrise that had been swelling on the horizon. I wanted a silhouette, close, large in frame, the bird and tree masking out the golden watercolours of the dawn. I wanted majestic and calm, and I probably didn't want the rat corpse. A bit distracting, not exactly majestic. And eventually I got the shot I was after, or at least as close as I got to the shot I was after before the raven decided it was time to be elsewhere and just kind of flew off. So I booted up Snapseed, my favourite image editing app on my iPhone. A bit of fiddling, nothing big, just pushing contrast and colour around to give it a bit of a kick up the bum. And there. Now, what I should have done was moved around to the right a little bit more to create more space between the raven and the tree. It would have been a better composition, more balanced and pleasing. But, as it was, I was shooting blind, my iPhone at ground level and me kneeling. I was using... Ugh, digital zoom of all things, and it was difficult to see the screen, and I was more or less estimating my framing using my familiarity with my equipment and my experience. So what are the lessons here? Well, the first one is shoot often. Always shoot. Every day. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Because if you're not familiar with your equipment, you're just not going to get the shots you want. It's as simple as that. You're going to miss stuff while you're fiddling around or trying to figure something out about your equipment. If I wasn't as familiar with how my iPhone performs with the sun coming into its lens, when I'm trying to shoot stuff in silhouette, when I'm sort of down at ground level pointing up and where my frame is going to be and how wide the lens is when I can't see the screen properly, I wouldn't have got that shot. The bird would have been out of there before I'd figured out how to frame up that shot properly. It's as simple as that. The second lesson is be I stood there 
like I said, for easily 10, 15 minutes, creeping closer, looking around, trying to figure out how to frame up the shot, what I'm going to have in the shot, what I'm trying to avoid having in the shot, what angle I should be at, all that kind of stuff. And the, the, the three or four people who sort of stopped and, well, what's he looking at? Oh, the couple of crows feasting on a rat. That cool's interesting. Phone out, click. From a standing position, wherever they happen to stop at the time, that photo is going to look crap. It just is, because they spent zero time figuring out what that photo should look like. Third tip is you've got to build your photographer's eye. Keep your eyes open. Look around you when you're walking around. Don't bury your face in your phone, check in your Twitter feed when you're walking through the world. Even if it's a park like, like the Botanical Gardens that this shot was taken in, I walk through there, you know, three, four times a week often. And, you know, I never, ever want to stop looking around because, you know, I'm very, very familiar with it, but there's always something new and interesting to take photo. I've never stopped looking around to try and find interesting photographs. Build your photographer's eye. Learn to spot things that could be interesting photos. I mean, from a distance, two ravens pecking at the ground on a, a bit of mowed grass doesn't seem very interesting, does it? You would have walked straight by, oh, a couple of birds, whatever. But no, if you stop, think, look, observe, you know, build that photographer's eye, you find that wonderful photograph. And that is, in my opinion, a wonderful photograph. And I've posted it on Twitter and on my Google Plus, and other people seem to agree. That is quite a nice photograph. Could be better, like I said, but, you know. But that does, of course, bring us around to the fourth point. Check your equipment before you leave your house because if I'd remembered to put the battery in this thing that shot would have been not just good but potentially magnificent because this is my trusted little Pentax Q I know it inside and out I can you know set it blindly I've got a lot more control over this than I do my iPhone uh, and this lens I had on it today is a wonderful 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 telephoto this is the 06 telephoto lens by the way if you have a Pentax Q and don't own the 06 lens you're a fool because it's the best lens on the system constant aperture f2.8 it's Brilliant. It's, it's basically stop waffling, Blunty. This video isn't about the Pentax Q, it's about other things. Right, you are. Let's get back to the point. And the point is, of course, check your equipment before you leave the house. Never leave the house without a camera for a start, but always make sure that camera has a fresh battery. Maybe carry a spare as well, which I usually do or didn't do today, obviously. And always, always carry a spare memory card. Check the memory cards in the camera, but always have one spare on you anyway. I carry a memory card around in my wallet. So I have a spare memory card anytime I need a top tip. So what's that? That's five tips. I think that's enough for one story. Five top tips to make you a better, more efficient photographer out there in the world. Now you can thank me. But that is your lot for this week. Uh, join us on the Google Plus community page to share your shots. Tell us your stories about your shots in those posts, by the way. Uh, feel absolutely free to do that. And comment on other people's posts. Ask them about the story. How do they find that shot? What do they do to get that shot? Ask people. You learn that way. Email me directly, of course, if you have a, a, an idea for something you'd like to see in the show, a product review or whatever. Uh, and of course, subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already to make sure you get every episode as it comes to you every single week. But I am out of here. Try and imagine for a second the look on my face when I whipped out my beloved Pentax Q, Q7 in this case, and went to turn it on. Oh no, it's not going to turn on. Is it broken? What's happening? Oh, I better check the battery. I've got a spare one in my bag, I'm sure. Oh, no battery in there. Oh, I'll get the spare one I carry around in the bag for just such an emergency. And no, it didn't. I, I took that battery out to charge it as well. That's what I was charging both batteries because I wanted to go shooting with the Q. And oh, you've left them both at home, have you? You enormous dingleberry. Check your equipment. Never leave the house with a camera and check your equipment before you leave the house.